Hey math enthusiast, I'm here to go over the notes on solving right triangles and the inverse trig functions. So first let's define by what I mean solving a right triangle. So that means to figure out all the side lengths and all the angles in that figure. So when you're done, you should have all three sides and all three angles. Now before we get into the inverse functions, let's take a look at an example. So up to this point, we've been using trig to solve for side lengths in an example like this. I know how to solve for a missing side length given a side and an angle, but now I wanna start thinking, can I work backwards? If I'm given two side lengths, can I figure out how big one of the angles is? So now I'm starting with the length of my hypotenuse and the length of one of my legs. Now let's say I'm solving for one of my angles, angle A. Maybe there's an X in there, or you might see a symbol that looks something like this. Draw a little bit bigger off to the side. The symbol is called theta. It's a Greek letter. All right, so instead of using our alphabet, like X, Y, and Z to represent variables. Sometimes they use these symbols to represent variables. So they'll use theta or alpha or beta for an angle measure. So if you see that symbol anywhere, just know it's a variable and it could represent any value. So I would start this problem the same way I've started my previous problems. I would identify the angle. In this case, this is the angle I'm worried about where theta is. I would label the sides that I do have. 16 is my hypotenuse, eight is my opposite side, and I would figure out what function I'm using. I know that the sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So now the question becomes, how do I get that theta by itself? How do I figure out what that angle measure is equal to? So in other words, how do I get rid of this sign right here? So in algebra, if I have a problem like this, 2x equals 10, we all know to divide both sides by 2 to get x by itself and to get to my final answer. The problem is what's taking in place in between these two is not multiplication right here. All right, sine is its own separate function. So what I need is an inverse function. A lot like what I did up here. So in order to get rid of the multiplication, I used division. So my sine inverse function is gonna look very similar to its original function. It's just going to have this negative one exponent. And what's going to happen when I take the sine inverse of my sine function is that those two are going to cancel out, which leaves me with just theta. But as you know, in algebra, what you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So what I'm going to have to do is take the sine inverse of 8 over 16, or if you want to, you could reduce it down to 1 over 2, which gives me 30 degrees. Now this brings us back to our notes. So each function has an inverse function. We can see here the sine inverse function, which we used in that example, cosine inverse, and tangent inverse. And the inverse function is specifically used to solve for an angle measure. So I'm solving for the measure of angle A in these examples that they've shown here. So let's take a look at a couple more. So for these examples, I'm trying to solve for the measure of angle A. It's the acute angle or an acute angle in the right triangle, so it's not the right angle. And they give me all the information I need. So I know the sine of angle A is equal to 0.16. Now, they've already changed this into a decimal, all right? But it essentially is still a ratio. So maybe they're saying 0.16 over one, Maybe the side lengths were actually 16 over 100, but they just changed it into a decimal. Okay, either way, I'm going to use the decimal because that's gonna help get me to my angle measure. So remember, my goal is to get A by itself or to figure out what the measure of angle A is equal to.
So once again, in order to get rid of sine, I'm going to need to use the sine inverse. And as I said earlier, what I do to one side, I'm going to have to do to the other side. So I'm going to do the sine inverse of 0.16, which leaves me with 9.2 degrees because I'm measuring an angle. So this next example is going to be set up the same way, except now I'm using cosine instead. So in order to get rid of that cosine, I'm going to use cosine inverse. I'm going to apply that to both sides. So I'm going to do the cosine inverse of 0.81. So remember that's my ratio just changed into a decimal. And that should give me the measure of angle A, which is 35.9 degrees. Now for this last example I already know I'm going to be using the inverse to solve for the measure of angle A so if you want to you can jump down to that second step. I know I'm going to get angle A by itself and to do that I'm going to be taking the tan inverse on both sides. So I still want to show that I took the tan inverse of 8.4 to figure out my angle measure but I can skip over the fact that I use tan inverse on the tan function to get the measure of angle A all by itself. And in this case, the measure of angle A is 83.2. Now, these examples are pretty straightforward because they already gave you the ratios. They already told you what function they were using. Now I wanna to start to think about how can I use these inverse functions in a right triangle? How can I use them to find specific angle measures?